Hey, what's going on, dudes? My name is Rex, and we are back with some more Dragon Age. On the last episode, we did about half of this uh, loathering place. <laughs> I am not sure if we're going to be able to finish it all on this episode, but I'll try to hurry, because there's kind of a lot to do. Anyways, before we start, strength on uh, Bark Spawn, not too shabby. I did a couple of buying and selling of camera just to speed things up, but to give you guys a small summary, I did sell everything that I had, obviously. Uh, trying to keep the heavy chainmail so that we can use it on stand very important I should probably sell some of this stuff, but I also equipped Morgan with uh, some really good items We got the uh, I think just started with that the surveyor So I'm willpowered you get that on the uh, at the very beginning with the, with the bandits <laughs> If you uh, tell them to give you their uh, whatever they stole then you get the surveyor Which is really good and we forgot to also equip the warden's oath plus two constitution which you know, after the uh, the joining, they give us that, which is fantastic. Anyways, uh, now that that's done, we should probably head over to the Chandra because we haven't been there. And there's a couple of things that we're going to have to deal with inside, most notably trying to uh, free Stan. So why don't we do that? There's word of Darkspawn stragglers, but no sign of the main horde. We are the only hope of protection this village has now, and I will not abandon them. That is all. May the Maker have mercy on us. Yes? Who might you be? I'm Aiden, of the Grey Wardens. I see. I am Sir Bryant, commander of the Lothering Templars. Tan Loghain declared all Grey Wardens traitors responsible for the King's death. You know this, I hope. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot of rumors. It's not true, though. I don't believe the Grey Wardens would be as careless or malicious as the Tan claims. But either way, there it is. It is best you not linger, though. Just in case. Yeah, we'll make sure to get out of your hair in just a minute. Before that, are you the one in charge here? The revered mother leads this flock. I merely command her Templars. Normally, our role is to protect the Chantry and seek out unsanctioned magic. For now, it is all we can do to protect the innocent. So what would you actually do if you were to find one of these mages? Let us pretend that I was such a mage. What would you do to me? Oh, I have no time to even think about such things right now. My concern is protecting these people. I see nothing threatening them other than the Darkspawn. Normally this is not the case. You see, as I said before, the uh, Erling actually left. The army of the Arl had to leave with the king and will, I guess, now turn Loghain. So this village is pretty much left undefended. So now the Chantry and the Templars that reside on it have to protect it, which is not normally what happens. But, you know, it is something. So I guess it's what it's, what it's saying. Uh, I do wonder, how do Templars fight magic? We have more than swords at our disposal. We're taught to dispel unholy magics as well. If only our powers work to keep away the Darkspawn. Alas, it is not so. Very important, guys. The Templar is actually one of the specializations that you can get as a warrior. And it is what it says it does. It's very good at dealing with mages. You get a lot of abilities that dispels magic. You get a lot of abilities that protect you against magics is very good. Always nice to have one in your team. Alistair actually happens to be one of them, obviously, since he was a Templar before. We'll touch that in just a minute before that. I need to find the Revered Mother. Where can I find her? In her study, no doubt. Preparing what she will take when we eventually evacuate. All right, good, good, good. So, uh, tell me about something else. If the matter is important, certainly. Actually, I have nothing else to ask. No. Unless there's something else you need. Might sound weird, but you actually have to do that for him to give you these other options that I want to get. <laughs> it's kind of weird, I know. Um, is there any other help that you can offer? I cannot openly help you, I fear, but... Here, take this key. It opens the large cabinet on the far wall. There is more there than we can carry when we evacuate, so take what you need. If you ask him that, he'll give you that key, which will give you a couple of health poultices, which is awesome. It's, uh, as you can see, kind of requires a lot of kind of dancing around the conversation, but there you have it. About those bandits outside of the village. Maker's breath. How many times must we drive them off? Actually, I killed them. All of them? By yourself? It's true. I saw it from my post. It was over so fast, we didn't even have time to get over there. Sad that it needed to come to that. But then they asked for it. Will you accept a small reward for your service? Oh, completely. I could keep an eye out for trouble for the right pay. I wish I could afford such help, to be truthful. Take your reward, at any rate. It is all I have to offer. If it interests you, there is a chanter's board outside full of quests that need doing. 
The Chanters even offer pay for some of them. Now, unless there's something else you need. Nope, that's gonna be it. That should go. Travel safely, and may the Maker watch over you. There you have it, the Templar kind of commander here of this region. Fantastic. Um, he does tell us about the Chantry board, which we have already uh, done a little bit of on the last episode, and we'll hopefully finish it on this episode. But before then, do you guys remember the Templar we found on the, on the beginning of the last episode? There was a dead Templar called Sir Hendrik, and we found a note. And he wanted us to talk to this guy if something were ever to happen to him, so we're gonna have to give him the bad news. Who? I beg your pardon. I did not see you approach. Sir Donald? Is that you? Alistair? By the Maker, how are you? I, I was certain you were dead. Not yet. No thanks to turn Loghain. If Arl Eamon were well, he'd set Loghain straight soon enough. If he were well? What, what do you mean? The Arl is stricken with an illness that threatens his life. We have found no cure, either natural or magical. When did this happen? Only a few weeks ago, but he has declined quickly. No one knows the nature of the illness, and even magic has done little to slow its progress. Our only hope now is a miracle. Every knight of Redcliffe has gone in search of the urn of sacred ashes. Andraste's ashes are said to cure any illness, but I fear we are chasing a fable. With each day, my hope dims. That does actually sound like a fable. Shouldn't you be fleeing the Darkspawn instead? My mission takes priority. But I fear I shall be returning to Redcliffe with nothing to show for my efforts. Hmm, interesting. So the request actually brought you here? I expected to take advantage of the Chantry's library, in fact. But my skills are better suited to battle than chasing down tales. I see. Can you tell me more about these ashes? They're quite interesting. Supposedly, the urn contains the ashes of the Prophetess Andraste. Surely you know all this. Yeah, we've established that a couple of episodes ago. We know who Andraste is. Um, but I guess the ashes, we haven't actually explained. I had a little pop-up before, but I guess I can explain. Andraste was actually burned alive. And uh, the ashes was brought by one of her friends into Ferelden. So the ashes are supposedly in this land but nobody knows where, and allegedly has the ability to heal any disease. Now that is interesting, could it actually be more than just a fable? I guess we'll have to find out. I would like to hear what you have learned though. If you're truly interested, there are books here containing a great deal of lore. Nothing I have found leads me to believe that this was anything more than a quest of desperation. I intend to return to Redcliffe soon and tell the Arlesa exactly that once Sir Henrik arrives. Oh, Sir Hendrik. Yeah, about that. I found him in s outside. He was actually dead. What? And you have his locket? And a note? Maker's mercy. Thank you for giving me these. I would never have known otherwise. No problem. How is there a reward for this? A reward? Oh, uh, of course. I hope a sovereign is sufficient. Thank you. I wonder how many of us have met similar fates on this mad quest. And there you go. I was actually hoping to meet our Eamon. Why is that, if I may ask? We need his support against Terran Loghain. I see. The Arl is a popular man, it's true. Terran Loghain, however, is a hero throughout Ferelden. Whatever the Terran has done or not done, the Arl remains ill or worse. That is my primary concern. And that will be ours as well. Do you have any advice? If Arl Eamon were well, I have little doubt he would assist you. My quest, however, remains the same. We should see what's happening in Redcliffe ourselves. I believe that now more than ever. If nothing else, I am certain you would be welcomed at Castle Redcliffe. The Arlesa is there, and she could tell you more than I could. There we go, so we know where to go. With Henrik gone, I need to return to Redcliffe. Perhaps later I will seek out the scholar his note mentions. But I must go. Thank you again, good sir. You have been most helpful. And there you have it, boys. So, do you guys remember on the last episode, I told you guys that there were four main quests. We need to see if we can use the treaties to get the elves, the dwarves, the armies of Rol Eamon, and the Circle of Magi. But, it's kind of a lie, but not really. There's a fifth one. The fifth mission is to get the Urn of Sacred Ashes. And yes, it does count like as a main mission, as one of the main five parts of the game. 
Um, even though it's a little bit kind of hard to get, like, you do have to talk to this guy in order to even get the quest, or have the ability to get the quest. So, as you can see, we don't technically have the quest, but we do get a codex. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's in here it says by Brother Ginny TV. This is the codex that I showed you, and it's made by this guy. You can actually find this guy in the game, and that's the first clue that you get. It's kind of a... Uh, it's very indirect. I don't expect anyone to even see it, but we may be able to find this guy and figure out who he is and if he knows more about these ashes, maybe we can find where they are. Anyways. And when the Maker spoke, a chant of light scattered in the darkness, the word dispelled fear and ignorance. Let those who cry out from the shadows be comforted. Let those who seek redemption be delivered. Let those who have sinned be forgiven. And when the chant spreads across all four corners of the world, let it rise at last to the ears of the Maker. Let him hear our unwavering faith. Let him hear our righteous dedication and enduring perseverance. And then shall the Maker return to us. And then shall the Maker return to the Black City in Heaven. And then shall the chant of light make it pure. Let all mankind be humbled. Let all repeat the chant of light. Only the word dispels the darkness upon us. And there you go. So they're going to keep repeating that for a while. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Anyways, uh, here's the key. You can use it. You can get the health poultices, the mushrooms. Cool. Maybe she was ugly. Maybe she had butt teeth. That would be It's kind of annoying these guys won't really shut up. But there's a couple of things that we can find here. Uh, there's, well, first of all, codexes. Awesome adventures of the black fox. We got this bookshelf we can also get to improve the codex. We got a chest. A couple of really interesting things. We got a gift here as well. So uh, it's always nice to go around, press tab, and see what you can find. There's another book here that we forgot for the first Blight Chapter 1. It's a nice story over there. And lastly, we have here this book. Great. Now, let's see if we can <laughs> convince the uh, revered mother to let Stan go with us. Will you be making a donation to the Chantry, my friend? You look like you have salvaged more of value than most who make it here. Uh, sure. What tithe is acceptable? Might I suggest 30 silver? Ah, uh, 30 silver it is. Thank you, my son. What can I do for you, then? Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Stan, the Kunari outside. If we can talk about him. It might have been kinder to execute him, but I leave his fate to the Maker. Why does he interest you? He's a great warrior. I'm just hoping to get him on my team. Then his next victims might count you and me as their murderers. Well, that's kind of the plan. <laughs> I was thinking you might release him into my custody. Your custody? And who might you be? I'm a Grey Warden. A Grey Warden? Oh dear, I will have to ask you to leave before you bring trouble on our heads. Yeah, it's kind of problematic to say that I'm a Grey Warden around this part, since Ter Loghain has been talking shit about me. Um, well, uh, let me take the Kunari and fight the Darkspawn. To defend against the Blight? Perhaps that is a form of atonement. But are you certain you can control him? I could use the Rite of Conscription if you want. I'm not sure that would help, considering your group's current standing. But you have convinced me. Here then, take the key to the Canari's cage and take him away. I pray this is the right path for all our sakes. And there he goes, we got the key. Now, as I said before, there are multiple ways to actually open the key. You can steal the key, you can force her to, uh, to give it to you, you can actually open the lock if you have enough uh, cunning which is kind of interesting, or you can get someone to open it for you. But <laughs> we'll talk to her later on in this episode for now. Just keep that in mind. Let's see if we can get some and quests here. When bears attack, on behalf of Thed the farmer and his departed son, I inscribe this missive. As the maker is my witness, I charge all those with knowledge of arms and armor to brave the dangers of the no northern wood. To find a family of bears and mold and kill the boy Ineth. Oh Jesus, we can do that. Kill some bears. 
And uh, a thanks to all the villagers who've opened up their barns and crofts to the refugees in these dark times. The Chantry regularly hears praise from our visitors and, our, and your virtuous deeds are mentioned in many prayers. Sadly, there is a lawn boy in the village whose mother, good wife, <laughs> it's funny, kind of naming to put someone, is missing. And she has been missing for the better part of a week as of this writing. She is presumed dead. May the maker bless her passing. She was a lady of middle years with red hair and fond of green cloak. All right, we're gonna have to see if we can find her. She hasn't been seen for a while, and we may find her in uh, in our adventures. And if we do so, we have to return with the news. You guys remember, she's the mother of the little kid that we talked to here in the bridge in the last episode. Sad little kid who lost his mother. So let's talk about your mother for a moment. Talking about mom <laughs> mother. I'd here. rather talk about your mother. Well, there's nothing to talk about. And besides, isn't your mother a scary witch who lives in the middle of a forest? Much more interesting. To you, perhaps, you would find the moss growing upon a stone interesting. You know what's more interesting than that? Apostates, mages outside of the tower. That's illegal, you know. You did not read that in a book somewhere, did you? I hope the small letters did not strain you over much. Oh, we could not talk about your mother. That works for me. As you can see, the conversations between Morrigan and Alistair will always be the funniest. Those guys are just hilarious. Anyways, I told you guys before that I was gonna touch on this little ladies here on this episode. So these are supposed to be tutorial quests. I'll show you how to make potions, traps, and poisons. But instead of that, I will show you because it's easier that way. <laughs> so thankfully, Morrigan actually comes with the ability to create potions actually has level 2 herbalism, which is awesome. But we're gonna create some basic health poultices. As you can see, uh, you need some ingredients. You got elf roots and flasks. Flasks you can buy from almost any store. Um, the merchant that we uh, saved on the last episode doesn't actually sell them. You're gonna have to go to the bar if you wanna buy them. But we have been uh, collecting some of them, so we do have some to use here. And elf roots, which you can find all around the map. Pretty easy to find. Let's create a couple of them. We can only uh, create seven, because we only have seven flasks. We're gonna buy some more later. But to do the quest, you only need three. So there's not too much to worry about. Let's go ahead and do it. You got a bed for the night. You taken care of. <laughs> Jesus, that cough sounds very gross. Actually, I was uh, more hoping I could help you. Don't need blades right now. We need beds, food, and an end to all these sad sots. I don't suppose you know anything of tonics, medicines, or herbs. Well, I not, but uh, my friend here does know. Then you may be able to do us a lot of good. All manner of travelers come through, many injured or sick. We do our best, but we're out of supplies. There's medicinal herbs in the woods to the north. If you make a few poultices, I'll scrape together some sort of payment. I'll write all you need to know in this note here. And there we go, we get the quest, but we already have the poultices, so let's finish it. Have any luck finding herbs in the woods? Yep, I did it, didn't need them, here you go. This will help many people. You're a good sort, you know. Thank you, that is so nice, you do get 50 silver, which is awesome. Uh, if you do this one, I believe you also get 50 silver, which is great, and if you do, this is the uh, traps, by the way. The In the bar you can find the quest for the poisons, which will give you 75 silver, so it's a little bit better, which is awesome. Anyways, um, if you pickpocket some of the people here and you fail, these people will not talk to you. Very interesting, it's almost as if they know that you've been uh, doing bad things around the neighborhood and they won't actually allow you to take the quest. Also, if you do not have the necessary skill, so for example, this girl, if you talk to her and you don't have the ability to make traps, Let's see, do I have the, I don't have any ability to make traps. If you don't have the ability to make traps, um, then she will say that you're not useful to her and you won't be able to talk to her anymore. This applies to all of the three little uh, tutorial quests. Also, finding, uh, fun fact, she was actually supposed to be a romantic uh, partner for the Grey Warden at the beginning of the creation of Dragon Age. For some reason, they decided to scrap the project, so, or I guess her. <laughs> so now we can't really have any type of romantic relationship with her, which is kind of sad, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. I read a little bit about it, but there you go. I'm not gonna do it. Um, I already showed you how to do it. You can do it's pretty much the same thing, right? I mean, uh, I don't really have the ability I can make poisons with my character, but uh, I already use all my flasks, but same thing. You know, you just need toxin extracts for the uh, for the venoms and the flasks for the poultices. You need the uh, the uh, the roots. The elf roots and, uh, you know, same thing. Anyways, 
Uh, before I opened up the cage for Stan, there's something that I want to do. I actually forgot to do this on the last episode, which is kind of sad. We're going to have to kill a couple of wolves, which is fine. Wolves are not really that big of a deal. Plus, it seems like there is the body of a woman in there. It might actually be the woman that we're looking for. There's a lot of wolves here, Jesus. If that is the woman indeed, then we're going to be super lucky. Getting her right here outside the village. No wonder why anyone has found her. It's like right there, dude. And what he really wants to uh, get close to the pack of wolves, I guess it kind of makes sense. Oh shit, I'm about to die. There we go. Not too shabby. Let's go Alistair. Doug. Switch things around. I still haven't done the tactics for Morrigan, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. Unless they actually kill my Kydra, in which case, there we go. Anyways, before I even loot them, I wanted to show you this because I forgot. Um, through the world, you're going to find landmark trees. Now, what is that for, you may ask? Well, it's for <laughs> Bark Spawn to pee on. I know. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. <laughs> my very dominance is now active. You can find this, my very uh, landmark spots all around the world. And if you make Bark Spawn pee on them, you get the Mavari dominance buff, which is this. Uh, the Mavari claims this area as territory, increases the hound's aggression and tenacity. So what does it actually do? It gives you uh, strength, constitution, and willpower, which is good. It gives you two constitution, two strength, and two willpower. It's pretty great. Um, it'll apply for any part of this map, except indoors. But, you know, that's I guess it's kind of understood. So as long as you stay on the map on the outside, you should be able to get the buff. It's pretty good. I, I mean, it is what it is, right? I'm going to show you every single dominant spot in the game, so be sure to keep an eye out of that. But, seems like we found the mother. Going. You found the body of the boy's mother and have recovered her keepsake. Cool, we're going to have to bring that over to the uh, to the chanter, see if we can give us a reward. And let me go ahead and uh, loot. There's nobody here to loot. All right. Anyways, before I deal with the bears, which are over there, I want to use stand for that. Since I might as well use it before we end the episode. Hello, sir. Finally here to rescue you. You wish something more of me? I do, actually. I have the key to open your cage. I confess. I did not think the priestess would part with it. Well, she did. She agreed to release you under my custody. So be it. Set me free and I will follow you against the blight. I like that whenever you talk to Stan, this music comes in the background. I love this music. It's It always happens with him. I don't know why. Love it. Um, very well. I'll let you out. And so it is done. I will follow you into battle. In doing so, I shall find my atonement. There we go. I guess that will do. Thank you, Stan. Glad to have you with us. May we proceed. I am eager to be elsewhere. I don't remember if I said this on the last episode, but even if you don't think uh, that you're going to be using Stan all, at all during the playthrough, it's always... Nice to open the cage because it gives you a whooping 1,000 experience to do so. Very important, guys. Even if you want to use it, open the cage. Important. Anyways, uh, we're going to get rid of Bark Spawn for now. Yes. Let's go ahead and choose Sten so that we can give it a shot. Sten is a warrior, in fact. More specifically, he's a two-handed warrior. Let's go ahead and check him out real quick. So you can see here he's a warrior uh, specializing in two-handed attacks. Sadly, uh, he doesn't actually have any armor equipped or any weapons, so we're gonna have to use the weapons that we looted on the quest yesterday. Do I have it here? Fantastic. Also, since he's uh, since he's using a set of armor, as you can see, heavy chainmail gloves, chainmail of chest and boots, it's all from the same set. And because it is from the same set, he gets a bonus. Very important. It's always nice to get that little bonus. Let's go ahead and choose a weapon for him. Chasing Blade, fantastic. Critical Chance, Armor Penetration, great. Um, yeah, I mean, Warriors, two-handed Warriors tend to be very, very powerful. They do a lot of damage, but they do tend to miss a lot, and their attacks are very slow, which means their misses are actually very painful as well. So they're kind of a, yeah, you know, it's like a double-edged sword, I guess. <laughs> no pun intended. Anyways, let's go ahead and help uh, Alistair level. Oh, as you can see, here's a Templar. So, uh, choosing a specialization gives you some bonuses to stats. This one specifically gives you magic and mental resistance. Magic is good because it improves his spell power, which is, again, good since he does cast a couple of spells, mostly just to attack other mages. Uh, mages who refuse the circle's control become apostates and live in fear of the Templar's powers. The ability to dispel and resist magic. As servants of the Chantry, the Templars have been the most effective means of controlling the spread and use of their arcane powers for centuries. 
Great, uh, let's go ahead and do Threaten. It's just a mode that makes it so that everyone gets more attracted to the tank, which is always good. Anyways, we got a couple of bears. Now, the bears do have an interesting backstory, and as soon as we fight them, we're gonna get a little codex. I guess I can explain the codex myself, but uh, you can have it here in the, <laughs> on, the, uh, on the bottom section anyways. The, uh, the elves have a very rich and old backstory, man. Those guys talk about, like, the beginning of time here in the world of Thetis and uh, what used to happen, you know, with their gods and whatnot, and, and they have, like, their own legends and history and stuff. Anyways, the fable says that the, uh, the old elvish pantheon had this god, right? This, this god that... Um, knew the secrets of the world. He shared the secrets of the world with the animals of the world. In this case, with the bears, with the foxes, with the hares, with the birds, and with the, uh, what's the other one? The bears, the foxes, the hares, and the birds, right? So the story, the fable, says that the birds exchanged the secrets of the world with other animals in exchange for gold. The foxes exchanged the secrets of the world with other animals in exchange for wings while the hares simply uh, shouted the secret so that everyone would know, while the bears suddenly slept away in their caves, keeping the secret safe. Now, the god found out what these animals did, so he took the wings away from the foxes, he took the voice away from the hares, and made the massive, powerful birds into the small, little, tiny, adorable birds they exist today. While the bears, because they kept the secret, remained strong through the millennia as a, as a gift for keeping the secret. That's what the fable says, that's what the elves believe. So all the elves venerate the bears as uh, some of the most wise kind of animals in the world, which I think is kind of interesting. Anyways, uh, we gotta grab this death root. There we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, there you go, we got the keepsake. From the mother of the child, we defeated the birds, we have Stan, we might as well just finish the episode today. I was thinking of going into the bar, but this episode is already running super long. I don't think I'm gonna have the time for it. Or do I? Let me think, what do you guys think? Do we have time today? Hmm, yeah, I don't think so. We might as well just leave it for tomorrow, it's not too much of a problem. Let's go ahead and uh, deliver this. Let him take notice and shine upon thee. For thou hast done his work this day. And the stars stood still, the winds did quiet, and all animals of earth and air held their breath. All was silent in prayer and thanks. And there we go, we get 50 silver, quest completed, items received. Life is good! We get the Oath Keeper for doing the quests, armor penetration, heal received. It's pretty sweet, we might as well just give it to Alistair. How is Alistair doing with weapons? He, oh, okay, this is actually better. Cool, can give it to him. Fantastic, uh, fun fact, this weapon actually what has now? the same model as the weapon that uh, Duncan uses, which I think is kind of cool. I can barely see it, but that's all right. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and level our character and finish the episode. As you can see, we got a specialization point. You get those at level seven, but, but I'm not gonna actually spend my specialization point. Why? I'm actually going to wait until you can actually get those specializations because uh, just the way that Dragon Age works, it saves... So usually you wouldn't have the ability to pick any of the specializations. You would have to buy the specializations or get them through quests. But because I have gotten them through other playthroughs, the game automatically gives them to me. Uh, it's just the way the saves work in Dragon Age. You kind of get to keep all your uh, achievements and all your... Well, this type of things that I guess also work like achievements in this game. I get to keep them through games even though I haven't actually gotten them in this playthrough, which is kind of annoying for Let's Play, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna actually uh, equip them because of that. I'm gonna wait until I can actually get them legitimately before I equip them, and I'll let you guys know when that happens. For now, don't worry too much about it. Uh, the Xerity, let's get it to 32. Fantastic. We're gonna have to put a point in stealth because we don't really have the necessary uh, combat training to do anything else. And there you go. Hope you all enjoyed, guys. Remember to like, favorite, and obviously subscribe. I love you guys when you do that. And we will we'll go to the bar and see what's inside there tomorrow. See you all later.